welcome to the Soul Tribe Podcast. The Soul Tribe Podcast was created to help you navigate through the world of spirituality, wellness, and self-development in an easy, grounded, and relatable way. We break down everything from the Akashic Records, manifesting, spirituality, and so much more. We want to help expand your boundaries and bring the spiritual world to you in a fun and easy way. Get ready to be inspired with tips, tools, and easy-to-digest information. Let's do this. Hi, Soul Tribe Podcasters. Today we have an episode that's an interview with Danielle. You may also know her if you do know her as Little Reader Tarot. She's a tarot reader, so she's been doing that for a while. That's like her thing. And we actually wanted to get her on to talk about that because we actually, funny enough, we have this podcast that like interviews a bunch of people that are in different spiritual paths or different spiritual awakenings or different tools that kind of can be related to that. Yet we never really had a specific episode all about just tarot. So this was long overdue. And thanks to Lorena, who actually has gotten readings, uh, tarot readings from her, who she, who she loved. Um, thanks to Lorena's kind of curiosity with wanting to get a reading, we discovered her. And she is also uh, intuitive. So when she's giving you readings, she's also getting inform- additional information. It's not just about the cards. So we talk about that in the, in the episode and, you know, what it is that she's getting or if she knows or how she, you know, built that up and all those good questions, the typical So we had so much fun talking to her about tarot. I've recently gotten into tarot and I'm still kind of progressing with it. So I'm kind of trying to not memorize the cards because I don't like that word. I think that's a bad way to learn. (laughs) I've been like trying to get more familiar with the cards so that I don't have to look it up every time. So that's my current process, feeling through with what I see and just confirming the definition of the card. I'll figure it out, I always do. But um, it was really interesting to hear that, you know, Danielle learned to do it in her own time, on her, in her own way. And, you know, now she's been doing it for a while and this is, this is her jam. So it was fun to talk to her. We actually got into a lot of other stuff besides tarot. Like, I think we had, we always have a set plan of questions we're going to do just to make sure we don't miss anything interesting. And what ended up happening was we went all over the place. We talked about many interesting stuff. So yeah, it's gonna be really cool for you guys to hear it. I hope you like it. Okay, so we are here with Danielle from Little Reader Tarot. And we're gonna bug you and ask you about everything tarot. (laughs) Perfect, I'm excited. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. First tarot reader on, on here, I think, right Lou? Yeah. 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 We haven't had anybody talk about tarot, which is cool because Lucia is actually, we're both trying to learn to read tarot, but we haven't. But I'm more dedicated. She's more dedicated. (laughs) I use more my Oracle cards. (laughs) Awesome. This is actually my first podcast. So really, we're all newbies in some way, right? I love this. This is so exciting. Oh my God. I love it. Okay. So maybe because there might be a lot of people that don't know you, maybe some people are on here because they know you, but Maybe you can tell them a little bit about yourself, where you're from, what you do, and how maybe you started getting into tarot readings. Yeah, so as you know, I'm Danielle, um, or some of you might not know, my name is Danielle. I'm from Calgary, Alberta, currently. Um, my background is actually in social work, which is really funny because I'm now pursuing tarot full time. I do a little bit of like content creation on the side, but tarot and expanding that and and always working with people and in some type of supportive capacity has always been like kind of my drive. And so, yeah, that's kind of like what I'm doing currently. And how I got into tarot is kind of like a long, long story, but I think it's more of like an intuitive story. Um, I'm not sure if you want me to get into like the long story or the short yeah, story. Yeah, no, no, tell your story. Okay. We'd love to hear it. Okay, so um, basically, I, I think a lot of the way that we get into like these type of kind of careers is like, 
I definitely grew up in a very religious community. I grew up in a very Mennonite community, but I grew up in a Catholic home. So going to church has always been something that I always... There's a Mennonite community in Manitoba? There are Mennonites everywhere in the <laughs> And it's specifically in like Southern Manitoba, it's called the Bible Belt. And it's just all these Mennonite communities that are like congregated together. They're so tight community, which is really interesting because there's such like this big spiritual hub there um, where people are really open-minded in a lot of ways. But then obviously there's a lot of things that goes with um, realities of like organized religions that can be really, you know, not inclusive. And so that was part of like kind of the community that I grew up in. And, um, but in terms of like getting into Catholicism, like I always was really interested in like the ritual aspect of Catholicism. I love taking like the communion piece of it. I loved like lighting the candles. I liked doing like all of the ritualistics of like, you know, crossing your like your face, all of that stuff. Like that was always something that was interesting to me. And I guess that kind of just has always been something that kind of connected to me deeply. Like I always loved archetypes like Joan of Arc or very, very strong like women, like like women. And but it was so funny, but I was, when I was little, I was always so terrified of witches. I would have dreams about witches. I would have nightmares about witches. I dreamt like my neighbor was a witch. My neighbor came to visit me in my, like in my dream as a witch. And I think that was, that was just more of like my intuitive calling coming from the past life, which I think we get a lot of dreams, especially when we're little. And I always saw ghosts when I was little as well. And I always felt like I knew things about people. And so I would bring things up and people would be like, how did you know these things? And it just kind of always kind of, you know, kind of directed to me towards like doing what I wanted to do now is when I was in social work. So I always knew that I wanted to help people in some type of capacity. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to be a teacher because, you know, my family, there's a lot of teachers in my family, there's a lot of helpers in my family. My dad was a social worker. I knew that I wanted to do something to give back. And I really wanted to help people that were struggling in that time. And so that kind of led me down this road of social work. And then throughout that practice, I noticed that my connection with my clients were very deep and deeper than a lot of other folks that I were working along with. And some of them were kind of like, I don't understand like how you get to this depth of a relationship with these clients. Like you seem to always have this openness and like you always are able to de-escalate the situation um, more than a lot of other people. Like, and I would try to give them all these like de-escalation techniques of how to get them down or like how to talk to them or create this connection and it just never worked for them like they just couldn't grasp it because it was such an intuitive feeling that I could never explain and then I think a lot of people get into tarot which I've noticed is often through like love and companionship and wanting to know about like their love life and I think that we all kind of get wanting to know um, how to create connection and understand connection and that kind of guided me in terms of like picking up my own deck um, in terms of wanting to like learn more about the situation. Am I feeling the feelings? Are those real? Like, is that valid? Like, or am I, or am I just like, you know, making this shit up kind of thing? Like, that's what I keep kept thinking about these things when I got into picking up this deck. And then, yeah, it just kind of grew from there. I went and saw a tarot reader and, and a local tarot reader, um, Pat, and she just said to me, as soon as I walked in, she's like, you're intuitive, aren't you? And she's very like extravagant, like just very out there. Like if you were to think of any, like a tarot reader that is like, you know, the quote unquote, like commercialized, not to say she's commercialized, but like that experience of it, she was definitely one of those people. And she's like, the phone started ringing. She's like, see, that's my sign to know that this is what purse, like you are intuitive. And then she's like, do you read tarot? And I had not told this woman anything about me. I was like, 
yeah, like I do a little bit on my own, but like never for other folks. She's like, this is what you're going to do. This is what you're meant to be. Because at one point I was like, I'm going to go back to grad school, all this. And she's like, this is how you're going to make money during grad school. And I was like, all right. And then, yeah, after that, I worked at a block part. Like we had like a little bit of like a, a little, how do I say it? Like, like a, I don't know, a garage sale outside of my door. I guess that's what I would say. A garage sale. And I started reading tarot through there. And then I did that by like, I don't know, I was charging people like five or $10. And it just kind of grew. And, and then I started my Instagram right away after that. And then that's just how it started all. So, so you actually, hurt. sorry, we're on like, like 20 million questions. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just a quick question before Lou asks hers. What? Did you, so you actually f- learned to read tarot on your own? I totally learned on my own. Wow. Um, there's a lot of great, beautiful decks out here that I think are really great, um, teaching. So like Doreen Virtue has an angel oracle, then an angel not an angel oracle deck, but an angel tarot deck kind of. And it's based on the Rider Waite deck. And it gives you like little snapshots of what the cards mean. And that was just totally self-taught on that. But also I'm one of those people who learns from modeling. So I watched so many tarot readers on YouTube and like just connected with other people and just even through like on my own um, mentors, like um, Clarissa Khan, she is a lovely, lovely human. And she is uh, also an energy, like kind of like a, an intuitive therapist, I would call her. And she, she also did a lot of readings in terms of sometimes I would go in to do like yearly readings and I would see her with her cards. And, but I also loved that she just focused a lot on her intuitive side. And that has always kind of been my dream and my relationship was with tarot has now never been to just be just a, you know, a card reader that just looks at the images that has never been my drive. I've always wanted to go into the unknown and I've always wanted to pick up, um, what does it mean? Like, what is, what am I really sitting, what's sitting in my body and what's really coming towards me and like, what is being said to me and what is not being clear for this other person oh and you Um, totally get that with your reading like I've done a few readings with you already we've done like what we've swapped readings (laughs) and it uh it's insane how intuitive you are like I always say that and I always feel and I've even told Lucy I was like it's not just tarot like there's another aspect to it where and I'm getting goosebumps just saying that it's like um there's a whole it's like it's like a double reading or something. You know what I mean? It's like all yeah. of the information coming through with the tarot and you being able to not only decipher what's coming through, but intuitively know and like just say what you need to say. And it's it's like very insightful, like very, yeah, it really like, it feels like an Akashic Records reading. And I said that to you the first time. I'm like, yeah. it sounds like you're getting messages from the Akashic Records. Like it feels that way sometimes. It's really interesting. Yeah, definitely. Well, then do you know, I mean, like, how do you, do you just like say it or are you like feeling it or do you get images? Like, how do you feel like you receive that? Um, I don't get images, like visual images in my, um, like my mind, um, often. It does though happen though, and especially on the connection with the person. I think as you probably know, once you build a relationship with someone, the, things that come images or like messages become like 10 times stronger because your connection, your bond with that person energy, it just like vibes at a different level. Um, so people don't really know that a piece around, I think when doing intuitive readings or receiving healing in some way, that if you continue in it, you the, like, it's almost like you're unlocking multiple, multiple doors. Right. And I think that's something that people don't really un- always understand. Wow. That's so different from the Akashic records. Very. The Akashic records, the closer you are to the person the the worse you are at reading at them because your ego is then really worried about them and your ego wants the best for them and then your ego is tapping into the reading and blocking you from properly having a neutral standpoint yeah. and communicating the that information happened to us them. like she yeah. tried doing a reading for me ages ago yeah and like you know my sister's been doing this for years and she's like yeah. I can't I can't do it like she'd get messages but they were just 
man it, it was, was hard I was, it's hard. like yeah I was blocking myself right left and center like because obviously I was worrying about Lorena and I wanted her yeah. I wanted her stuff to really be fixed and I was you know yeah. I was invested in her improving and so yeah I couldn't I couldn't do it <laughs> I, yeah it's interesting my okay so I have this friend of mine from New York and she's also a fellow reader and her and I have been reading for each other for probably two years and it's just like little readings here and there um but I wonder like a lot of it comes down to I think for us it's just become we've known our energies are so matched and like we've known each other so much for so long that our messages are just more clear in terms. So it doesn't take a lot of time for us to decipher through kind of like the muddiness of it. We just have this like internal intuitive knowing of it. And, and especially with regards to um, like, if, if I haven't seen her in a while, like I remember just like there's one thing I was just like so what's going on with you and XO like you know this person here because I just had this intuitive knowing that something was happening between them and then yeah it just kind of explored that so it's interesting I want I'm very interested about like is I wonder if it's like more of like a sibling connection sometimes too or but I'm curious I just find that it's the opposite for me right now I mean, I've done readings for my mom, my dad, and they went well. I wouldn't say they went badly, but I think Lucy and I have a weird connection. Okay. Like when I say weird, I don't mean like bad. I mean like we, we're, we're too invested much- in each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but maybe what it is is like okay. As I talk through this, like I feel like maybe what is going on between the two of you is just like your path of where you are were headed like you I almost like you got like all that you needed from each other and then now it's kind of like okay you're branching off to needing to like receive new information from other folks maybe that is what's happening I don't know why I just keep getting that from in my they keep saying it they keep saying it so yeah I'm curious to see it's funny because your stare is like the Akashic stare when you're getting information you must be Akashic records without knowing it. That's where you're getting information, maybe. Yeah, I think a lot of my information. So uh, I definitely, as people who has have read for me or have healed me and in, in energetically, know that I have quite a bit of like guides. I have quite a few guides, and I think we all have quite a few guides, but a lot of them sit at the table with me constantly. And so I think that they have been, they're kind of like my, um, they definitely like filter everything throughout it. So sometimes I will get direct messages from the universe. Sometimes I'll get the direct messages, like tapping into, um, you know, past lives with regards to other people who have moved on from this life here. Um, and, but I definitely feel like a lot of it comes from them versus, um, other other like beings or energies. So that's usually how it goes for me. But yeah, I need to, I definitely have ventured down the Akashic records on my own, but it's always harder. I don't know for me when I do the visualization, it's a little bit harder, but yeah, I don't know if you have any trips and trips, uh, tips and tricks. Oh gosh. there you uh, go. <laughs> <laughs> We talked, I think we talked about this the last time we chatted. Um, but I think if what you're doing is working, yeah. Then just follow that. I mean, you're you're able to channel whenever you need, right? Like Yeah. So it's, that's I, important. So the problem more a lot of people turn to the Akashic records or external things when maybe they're having a hard time controlling it or not knowing when it's coming through or not being able to tap into it. It's a good way to just at least to get like the the wheels, you know, spinning, right? Yeah. But I think for you, you're already on that path. And if that method works, it's maybe just honing into, um, I don't know. I, I think I feel, and I always feel that when we, when we chat and when we kind of channel together, that you're very much aligned with it. And I wanted to ask you something that, that just came up right now. It's yeah. like, how, how do you take care of your channel? Like, what do you do? And how do you like make sure that you're aligned with yourself? to make sure that you're channeling and when you do your tarot that you feel connected and that you feel like you're, you know, one with your soul and the universe and all of that. I definitely think that has to do with my energetic like vibration for sure has to, um, that helps with me being connected. So 
I definitely think like the last few months have always been like a struggle just with everything happening energetically with regards to like the pandemic and then with Black Lives Matter and like all of these additional things that have been coming to the forefront around um, folks who have been pressed. Um, it's been definitely challenging, but I think that's also kind of just like a part of our learning of recognizing we need to really focus on self-care and how to do that. I don't necessarily always have um, protection spells or protection mechanisms. Um, like I definitely salt my windows and I salt my apartment and I do energy clearings through that. That's important for me. Um, but a lot of it has to do with my trust in my guides and trust and like faith that they're going to protect me and all of that, because those are that my guides are literally like have gotten me through so much since I was little. So I feel like I've always done this since I was little. It just kind of, kind of becomes second nature to me in a lot of ways that I can't, I have a hard time explaining like, okay, um, how do I tap into certain energies when it's just, like something that has been there it's like a switch on and off for me um but definitely there are certain times where I have to um I ha definitely have to like clear the energy away after certain readings or certain topics like especially when working with certain clients um I definitely like especially for clients who are um, especially clients that have like traumatic experiences that are coming up in the readings that we need to talk through, especially if they have, um, you know, have been something that I've dealt with personally or have, you know, somehow dealt with it impersonally or it sits with me differently. I definitely have to move that energy out. Um, but I, I'm a true believer in some way that like the universe clients will come to you. Like there won't, I feel like it just, how do we say it? It's like the universe won't give you anything that you can't handle. I really do truly believe that. And especially with client work. Totally. Um, and to say like, there's always going to be, I can do all these rituals before my readings, but that doesn't mean that it's going to serve me for the rest of my time while I read. So I think it's always an like ever growing process and always changing. Does that yeah. answer? Yeah, yeah, that totally makes sense. Okay. Yeah, the Akashic Gregor says the same thing. They say that you're you're gonna be those that need you as their like the the messenger, I guess you can call it, because it depends on what tool you're using. Yeah. You're gonna be the one they're gonna be attracted to, right? You yeah. can give them what they need and you can handle you know, what they need to channel or what, what information they need totally. so that, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and I believe that too. And I, and, and the funny thing about Kashuk records is and you must get this also um, when you're going through a certain issue or you just finished passing it, you'll then have to get people that are in the middle of that issue. And then you'll, the time. Yeah. And so you, you're like, oh, yep. Mm -hmm. In your case, it'll be cards. In our case, it'll be telling information and, yeah. and you'll be talking to them and then you'll hear all the messages they're getting. You're like, yep. You're thinking to yourself, I just went through all this. And that's why that person came to you because you understand them. Right. Totally. Mm -hmm. All the time. And it's so interesting when certain themes come up, like, okay. And like, there's some things that I don't deal with, but I remember like, there was like one two, three months ago where I think I told you this, Lorena, where all I had were conversations with clients about their like, almost like their sexual awakening in some ways. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of like a driven force for a few months of like, okay, we're going to be talking about like expressing sexuality, which is like not a, a thing I'm not comfortable with. It's totally something I'm open to. It's just interesting to see, okay, this is what they're throwing at me there right now. This is what they need. And so it's interesting. It's interesting to see like themes of things and where, you know, we're all being led to in terms of growing our practice. Okay. So funny question about totally. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to get down in the nitty gritty, but I mean, like, so you're like, if you read a lot of spiritual books, at yeah. some point they'll say like, you need to save that sexual energy. Like you had to accumulate it and use it for your spiritual growth. 
Mm-hmm. Are those messages that you've gotten with, you know, reading people about the sexual part of their life? Can you explain that a little bit more? What do you mean by that? Yeah, like some spiritual books are like super extreme to the point where yeah. they're like, you know, if you want to enhance this and you want to enhance that and you want to get totally aligned, they're saying that you're not supposed to, you're supposed to be celib- celibate. celibate? Um, celibate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because that's energy that you're going to be kind of taking out of yourself. Yeah. You know, having an interaction with somebody else. And you, also your auras are kind of feeding off of each other and you might lose something from that on top of energy. Yeah. Uh, so it's saying that you're supposed to kind of sustain from it for a while while you're in the most important part of your like spiritual growth, right? Mm-hmm. And so I'm wondering if you've gotten that message before because I felt like a little iffy about that message. I'm like, I don't know. And the, for fair reasons to feel iffy about it. I think like uh, naturally I, I don't read a ton for like male identified folks. However, I do, and it's great, but a lot of the um, clients that I have received are about female-identified folks, and a lot of it, so I come from, like, more of a, like, a witchy practice, so there's definitely, like, um, manifestations that can happen through, like, having sex and orgasms, like, you can manifest through orgasms, right? So, like, those things have always been something that has been, I definitely have been encouraged to do. I don't know. And other people have been encouraged. I need to tell that to my boyfriend. That he's <laughs> <laughs> What's the book? There's a book, right? Everyone's like chatting about it. It's sex magic or something. Yes. I need to and read I, that book. Yeah. And I haven't read it, but I've heard about it. And, uh, I also got a reading from, uh, Duchess of Eastwick, and I love her. She's always been kind of like my, definitely more grounded into the witchy side, and I've always enjoyed it. So she always pushes me whenever I get my readings from her. Um, and she definitely talked about this before about manifestation. So it's like, yeah, that's true. It's true. And then literally after we talk about these themes of learning things, that was when I got this trend. But a lot of it has to do with, I think, about self-empowerment within the sexuality a lot for female-identified folks um, and recognizing, like, pleasure has to do with, like, really realigning our energy as well. I keep getting, that's what I kept getting for, like, much, some of the main themes. And then some of it were very, were opposite, like, is more around either if some like really going deep down in terms of like how it's sitting in their body. So if someone was like really having lots of sexual encounters, is it like, is it something that feels good to them because they want they feel empowered by it or is it because they're trying to fill it other like void? And there's definitely some of that that did come up, but it wasn't the majority of it. Um, and so it's just, it's really I, I, I hate saying this because it's so like, I feel like it's cop, cop, cop out in some way, but it's really honestly dependent on the individual and what is happening. And I, and I hate saying that because everybody so, like, makes though. sense because it's an intention. What is the intention yeah. of the person in the spiritual world is everything. So that does make sense that you say that though. Definitely. So, so funny. Didn't well, this I is our first that? talking yeah. about sex on like, the podcast. I also. definitely want to do a whole episode where we can talk about this. Like, Okay. how it's linked to like we're gonna have to get somebody on here and like maybe we'll do like a big girl chat we'll get like a bunch of people on and we'll all talk talk about it but like I think it'd be interesting to get into that and like how do you manifest because even I think crystals and foster when my mom did um a course with them they talked about the orgasm and how that can help you um like bring in your desires and like what you want to manifest and how that, how that, like even the, just the female orgasm is so powerful. Yeah. Which I believe is true. I agree so too. Yeah. I Very totally true. agree. And I'm sure it has to do with like our certain chakras and how, where we're sitting and all of that stuff too. Yeah, right? for sure. I'm sure. Um, yeah. But yeah, I didn't think about it that way because if you think about it, like it's the root chakra is like, the one that com- confirms that you're on in the incarnation and the sacral chakra was is like the reproduction area. All of that is actually directly linked to you saying I'm here and I deserve what, you know, I deserve what my body and my soul wants in this incarnation. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it makes sense that if you're, it's like you're enhancing the energy there during the moment. Right. 
and, yeah. and yeah, I can understand how that would help. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going to definitely talk about this in the future. <laughs> <laughs> just a little introduction over here. Yeah. I love it. Well, that's cool. I love, I love it. Like, well, just... this was not planned. <laughs> this was not at all. I was like, okay. <laughs> all the things. <laughs> okay. So it's cool that people can see your process because like I've obviously experienced a reading with you several times and I loved your reading. Um, but I always say it's a little bit more than just the tarot. It's more that the tarot in itself is just amazing, but then the messages that you're able to intuitively communicate are super interesting. And I love getting readings from different kinds of people because I always feel like, like you said with the tarot, like seeing their process, seeing how they work, seeing how they channel, seeing how the information comes through. Mm -hmm. So for you, it's, is it your guide speaking to you, kind of giving you that the messages for your clients? Yeah, definitely. Guides, for sure. Um, there's like a couple that like to sit with me a lot. Um, but then sometimes, like um, I mentioned before, is that when I'm reading for folks and they definitely have... Um, have people in their lives that really want to chat with them. I definitely will chat with that person. Um, I'm not, I don't go into the practice of like speaking to afterlife too often. That just doesn't, it doesn't necessarily, maybe that's like a part of my own boundaries. It's part of my boundaries of how I want to channel messages. It's just not that in that aspect. Um, but I think like, again, like where my guides, they like to, um, again, filter. It's almost like they have, I keep getting, now I'm getting this image of them where it's like, uh, you know, when you have a club and there's like a bouncer in the front and like, you're like, they're checking to see who's coming in. I feel like that's what my guides do. And I don't know if anybody else feels that way, but that kind of feels like what it is for me. But, um, and so that's usually how things filter. And then obviously, like, I think there are larger messages where we're like, okay, this is like the universe, the universe is taking you there. and Like the universe is bringing things up or whoever it is that is like someone's larger deity or whoever it is. Because I think also recognizing that I like to meet people where they're at in terms of what their belief systems are too. Um, and so that's usually how it goes for me. I, yeah, I think that's basically how it works for me. That's pretty cool that you say that because we, when we teach the Akashic records, other people, we, ex we always explain that. And it's, you're not going to channel information about things that you don't really necessarily believe in yourself or that the other yeah. person believes in. If you're reading their, their Akashic records, mm -hmm. it's just, it won't come through because they won't resonate with it. So maybe they're filtering that for you. Like you said, they're like the bouncers of like, you know, I'm reading for this person that doesn't even believe in so-and-so thing or doesn't, doesn't resonate with this topic. So I, I'm not going to go into that in a very deep way because that they're just, it's not going to click. It's not going to go through. Totally. Totally. We always like really hammer that in a lot. It's like, you know, the more, you know, the more you're going to be able to channel. And that's also goes for you, right? Like yeah. if you don't necessarily like vibe with past life information, that's just part, maybe not part of your path. Definitely. I agree. Um, past lives seem to like come up, but I'm, it's curious. I'm, and I'm wondering has it, has it for you too as well? Um, has there been like more of an interest of it? Like if there seems to be more messages around past lives, um, more than the current situation. Cause that seems to be coming up for me as well lately. I will get like yeah, more people questions. like waking up to it and like accepting it. You mean more as in like messages about specific past lives seem to be showing up like in terms of my reading where I haven't even asked. Oh. And I was just wondering if that was something that was coming up for you all. For me personally, it, mm -hmm. it does come up if it's like, if let's say someone comes to me and they're, you know, they don't necessarily associate an issue they're having with mm -hmm. a trauma, which, you know, trauma can be defined in many different ways. It doesn't have to be something. Yeah. What's tra traumatic to me might have not been traumatic to you. For sure. Um, there are things that are very traumatic, obviously, like not taking away from that. But yeah. um, then they link that to past, like a past life with that same soul. But only if they need to know it. That's the thing with the Akashic Records. Like you're not going to be told about past lives if it doesn't pertain. It's just going to bombard you with information that you just don't need, right? Okay. 
for me, since coronavirus started, it's been more people just wanting to find their true path. That's been like the main thing. Like people are done doing what they're not here to do. People are done having that like boring job that doesn't fulfill them. And it's mostly people coming to just figure out, okay, what am I good at? Yeah. What can I do that's going to fulfill me? And just, I can live a comfortable enough life. So that's been most of my, and it's like the, the Corona thing, which is, it's supposed to do that, right? That's what it came yeah. here to do. We yeah. had that it was like a spiritual virus that it was here to give us an, a really necessary awakening, right? To realign us all. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely a balance. As we're all in the search of like what balance means, right? Yeah. Like what's going to happen? Where am I going to go? What's the best thing to do? And like, you can't plan anything out. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> Lorena called me the other day. She's like, I don't know if I'm going to stay in Kim and I go, I was like, nobody knows. There's always, and my, my conclusion was there's one thing in everybody's life right now that they can't figure out what they're going to do or how it's going to go. <laughs> it's like, it's so least. true. We have to be so comfortable in the unknown. And that's been very challenging I think for all of us like amen but at the same time there's some comfort into it as well like I've never under I don't know about you all but for some reason I feel very held in a lot of ways that I haven't felt in a long time yeah Yeah. yeah. I I, I'm one of those people that need to know what's going to happen plan it out take my time with it make a to-do list yeah make a list and now I'm like actually it's okay that I don't know what's going to happen. And if, and you know, and it will reveal itself to me at some point, it'd be nice to be able to prepare for it. But if I can't, like, I just won't. Yeah. And I think that was also like losing my job. It was like, whoa, from one day to the next, I don't have a job anymore. So like, you know, that, that just kind of makes you look at life a little bit differently. And I think that's what a lot of people are going through right now. It's the rug being pulled out from under them and they just have to, figure it out and find themselves yeah definitely. which is beautiful it's a weird time it's a weird yeah. time but it's, it's also so like an opportunity you know what I yeah. mean yeah sorry that there's uh ambulance uh, living in the city <laughs> living in the city of downtown Calgary <laughs> <laughs> so how was the how was the like situation there when you know corona hit and people were starting to quarantine was it the same as everywhere else in the world um yeah so it was it took a little bit longer like um I think sorry um it showed up probably around March here for sure um I remember literally the day I was like the day after things started really showing up here I was like the day before I was meeting up with a friend and then I saw my friend's like partner and you know all of these things and then that night it just you just had this like inner knowing of like, I don't really feel like I should probably be out doing the things that I usually do. And as someone who's like autoimmune compromised, like my experience with it is very different than probably a lot of folks. Um, and so I was like self-isolating way beforehand. Um, things have definitely lifted here in terms of like, um, what we're able to do and all of those things. But for a while it was very, very close. Like everything was closed. It was, I couldn't even go to the grocery stores. I had lovely people around me being able to go for me because I just could not, I did not feel comfortable going. And especially living so close to the U S it's such a dramatic like different experience that's happening down there than here. And it was just a little bit wild, but things are lifting here. There's, I, I don't know about you all, but I don't feel like it's done. Um, it is not done. I was going to ask you that. I was like, what messages are you getting? <laughs> no, like yeah. moving um, forward. Getting, like this is the, just the beginning. This is not the end. Yeah. I don't feel like it's done. I don't feel like, I feel like this is like, you know, it's almost like this experience of like just before a storm or a lightning storm, you know, this the is calm. Like that. that's how I feel about it. Um, and I think that it's definitely a lot of other folks that I work uh, that I um, am connected here with. We all have something about September and I don't know about you, if you get any messages about September, September seems to be a big month for a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. Um, 
but September seems to be like something that keeps coming up for me. Um, I don't, but I feel like the next wave is not going to be, I think it's going to be much more intense in some ways, but I don't feel like it's going to be like as long lasting. I, those are things that I kept getting. I'm curious to totally hear what you all think and like what is to come. Um, I, I don't want getting like September or any dates really specifically. Okay. Um, I think the cash We've heard also from known. people as well. Like July is going to be huge. The yeah. astrologer of the year. Had on. She mm-hmm. said that like, cause there's an eclipse coming up the 21st, which will already be done by the time this episode comes out actually. But what did V say? V we interviewed oh, a girl. A v um, was amazing. Um, oh, I don't remember what she I said. I think she said July as well. Like it's going to get, yeah, yeah. Oh, Pretty bad. she talked about like, so there was the whole protesting going on right when we were talking. So she was saying that something else was going to happen in the end of June or the beginning of July. And I had already heard that also. So it's to do with like people getting very upset about a situation. So it's about like, a specific situation. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So something else is going to happen that's everyone's going to like, you know, you know, freak out about. Um, so yeah, that's what she was talking about. And she also didn't feel like this was over. Um, yeah. so, yeah. so it's, it's, it's quite a few of us that are like somewhat intuitive or readers or something. Yeah. And we're all kind of getting, I feel like I want to scream and shake everybody. I see on the street, they're acting like it's not happening. Like this is not over. <laughs> I know. I know. And it's, and I don't know about you all and where you're at, but my, like, you know, each province has its own, like, um, premier right and they get to dictate like how things are moving forward um and my premier is definitely not on the progressive side very much on the conservative side and he is very much like I want to move this forward and I want to move quickly um and we're like an energetic hub here in the province that I live in like it's very much an oil-based um province and like that is the main agenda and so just like there's little things that were happening within the like during this COVID experience was like that he was like you know donating to certain companies that were oil-based and then he basically created a bill that um, put regulations around protesting so made basically like in a sense like protesting illegal in a lot of ways um so there were lots of wild experiences that were happening and it was literally like probably i think it was like the week after we had um one of the first protests around the black lives matter movement so in calgary that that happened um i'm sure people can read up the bill read regarding that bill a little bit more if they want to about what is happening in our my current province but there's a lot of things that are being shaken up and especially in Canada too like the talk around like indigenous folks in Canada specifically experiencing like you know like specifically indigenous folks like uh males and women as well just like experience the highest rates of incarceration so around like yeah in Canada as well as like police brutality as well and and as someone who's worked with um, clients who are very vulnerable hearing their stories as Indigenous folks and their experience with the police like it's all just a huge massive shift and like that you know when you talk to Indigenous folks or other Black folks like they will tell you like this experience is not new to them. Like, so when people are getting checked in, they're like, kind of like, yo, this is like my time. Like I'm always hearing this. Right. And so, um, I think it's just interesting to see how we're all us white folks are just like awakening in such a different way. And it's kind of like, okay, how many more awakenings do we need to feel, like, to experience to really get the impact of really shake and move? But I don't know. This one feels very different, for sure, like, energetically. We're interrupting this episode to let everybody know that Lorraine and I are currently running a sale for our dual reading. In order to take advantage of this sale, you must contact us at the soul tribe podcast at gmail.com before july ends which means that you'll just be booking 
before July ends with us. What is an Akashic Records dual reading? Basically what that is, is Lorraine and I will both be opening up your Akashic Records at the same time. So we'll both be channeling your Akashic Records, your Master's Guides and Beings of Light. And you will receive information from both of our channels, which are very different forms of receiving energy. We both have different ways of receiving information, of communicating it, and we're both very good at different aspects of reading. So you'll be getting the best of both channels in one reading. If you would like more information, just shoot us an email and we will contact you with anything that you need to know, any further information, and to go ahead with the booking. And also, yeah. I think Lorena and I, our mission is from the beginning and more so now since COVID started, yeah. our mission is to raise the vibration of the collective, mm-hmm. um, human collective, and we're, cause we're trying to help. That, that energy is going to help clean out a lot of trauma. And this is part of what that is. Yeah. So we can't be distracted. This is what, like, the information I've gotten from my own masters. We can't be distracted with being part of that conversation. We need to continue to work to put ener- positive energy onto the collective so these things can start clearing out in the world. If I start concentrating on, you know, having a fight with this person over here because they don't like the way I said something or, yeah. or they don't like that I didn't say something or that I did say something, you know, it's yeah. really everybody and I, I prefer to use my own energy right now to continue to like do good things like continue to teach people to read Akashic Records continue to read people to help them center themselves and continue to send light and love to the collective so that we can all clear out all our trauma because everybody has some There's sort a lot of, of trauma totally. I think I'm definitely in a place of like calling in definitely is calling in versus calling out right calling out culture we know it's not working and hasn't worked for a very very long time and calling in is super important of that important for that and I guess for me right now my experience is like really going into that shadow work and I love that you talked about that Lorena because I think shadow work is that nitty-gritty of like really looking at the table of like the good and the bad and the ugly like good and bad and the ugly around in terms of like the actions that you have even taken in your own life um and like you've experienced as well and like really going into that deep knowing of it because like where is that being held from where are those feelings coming from is it shame guilt all of those things is it from being like our have to do with our own value system of recognizing like okay are we do we not feel valued at this point is this the way is that is this the reason why I'm acting this way um and especially now this has always been something that continues to come up for for me and with clients is around value and self-value and really finding within that work that they're worth and I think we've talked about that around around like death around worthiness and and I think that it's all collected together in this experience of like again bringing being forced to look within like we've never been in a place of where we're all in the kind of like the same boat, especially with regards to COVID, right? We have never been in the same boat of like all yeah. experiencing one big traumatic experience and COVID is a traumatic experience. It's traumatic, and, yeah. You know, like there's a lot of things that were taken away for folks and a lot of things were kept coming to light about people's experiences. Um, and especially around like the disability, like community too, right? Um, there's so much ableist talks that was happening in this during this COVID, but now we're really starting to recognize like, okay, have I, even the people who like seem to give work seem to be, you know, quote unquote, woke are really coming within and really challenging themselves of like, okay, where is all these beliefs coming from? Where do I sit? Where can I improve? All of those things like, you know, is this, is my kind of like, I keep getting like wokeness as like, is that just a self-serving thing? Is it really true to like my own heart and my integrity? You know what I mean? My internal. It's just interesting. Yeah. Yeah. What's what I like while you're talking because we have our Akashic Records open. The Akashic Records are talking to me about this is a day DNA cleanse. They were talking about this year being like a year for us to reboot our our bodies, our awakening. And the first step to doing that is obviously to take out trauma, but it has to come out of the DNA. And so a lot of us are being woken up of things not of ourselves, but like of our ancestors. 
And so you'll see a lot of people that are, you know, immigrants that or had parents are immigrants or, you know, in these cases, slaves or, you know, people are going to start getting enraged because they're actually clearing it out of their DNA. That's what the masters are saying. So that's yeah. really interesting. I'm just getting this for the first time and I, I never saw it that way. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, and reprogramming, right? We're all reprogramming in some way. Completely, yeah. 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 We need to yeah. clear it all out before we can like put that really good program in, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and you have to be careful what you consume, right? Like, yeah. because it's just as important to clear it out as putting in something new in there. It's exactly. that we talk about that a lot too with our courses and stuff. You, like DNA. having to replace that energy with something or yeah. a belief system, right? Like yeah. what belief system, if this no longer serves me, what am I going to replace that with? Yeah. And you have to be, and you have to really resonate with that and you have to believe that too. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't matter if people around you don't believe it or don't, you know, think the same way as you. And that's kind of the way Lucy and I see it. It's like, we know where everything's heading in a way, like we feel the energy, but you know, just because, um, things are coming up now doesn't mean things aren't going to get better, but we need to go through this hard time so people can wake up and people can see what's happening and what's been happening so that we can change. Otherwise you, there's, there's going to be no change. Yeah, exactly. Totally. I agree. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting time we're all living right now. And I think um, it's, you know, scary at moments, but at the yeah. same time, it's like, wow, like my soul signed up for this. Like, what, what, what am I doing here? <laughs> like, yeah, you know? it's true. Like, I'm glad I'm not the only one who thought about it. I was just like, oh, oh my God, I can't believe that this is what I decided but it makes sense think about it if you pick this moment to be incarnated you're going to be part and you're and we're on the good we're on the good side the awakened yeah. side the, the, the side that's deciding to continue to awaken up the side that's deciding to work with light and continue to put light into the collective mm-hmm. our ascension yeah <laughs> <laughs> please i'm glad we're talking about ascension so i have you been experiencing ascension symptoms like the max because i have I what remember- symptoms are you experiencing experiencing Lots of headaches that has always been, I remember I had this one time, it was like a couple of, sorry, there's a cat around. Um, (laughs) Speaking Um, of ascension. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Let's just make herself present at some point. Um, uh, So a part of, what was I, what I was going to say, sorry, the cat totally derailed me. Um, Your symptoms for ascension. Yes. So it was probably a couple months ago. I can't remember which full moon, but I was, I never had such a bad migraine in my life. It was so like debilitating. I couldn't leave my bed. I couldn't leave like the couch. Like I was so nauseous. Like I was so, so sick. And I didn't put two and two together until like literally the day after I was like, oh my God, that was totally an ascension symptom. Because after that, my opening, it's always interesting experiencing a symptom because then literally the day after your opening is like, it's like this huge new portal that you just cannot, it's just like one day of, it's almost like a day of play. I don't know if you ever get that where it's like, kind of like, Ooh, what do I get to learn today? You know, or what new thing have I just like experienced? And it's just, a, it's a different, um, different experience for me. But a part of that is that, and then also in terms of definitely around mood and like level of I definitely feel like sometimes lethargic as well, like tired, needing to sleep, all of that always kind of leads to when I know I'm going to experience some type of ascension. I don't know about you. I'm curious just here. I don't think I've had any symptoms. I don't know. I think, yeah, for me, I don't know. I was really sick in November. Do you remember that, Lorena? Mm-hmm. And I remember that I had channeled in one of the episodes of Catch Records, I started talking about it. And then after I continued to channel it, and they were talking about how my frequency was changing and that my body wasn't taking it very well. And yeah, I remember that. And after that, my channel did kind of enhance a little bit more. Yeah. I started receiving a little bit more outside of my box. Like normally my box was personal stuff. And then yeah. after that happened, I started coming outside of the box and I started receiving things about earth and the world and, and the change is coming. So it was almost like they upped my game before December. So I guess so I could start channeling the stuff that was going to come for the year. Um, yeah. so that was my thing. Um, 
And now I hear all the time, my ears are like, shh, 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 shh. I had that weird pop. Yeah. Like the zhuzhing. I had that for a while. <laughs> the <zhuzhing>. like, <laughs> I just yeah. don't know. what It's it's not a it's buzzing. Cold. It's not a beeping. I had that for like three days straight, probably a few weeks ago. And I kept trying to explain it to like Joe. I was like, you know, that noise in your ear. And he's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I was like, oh God. And then I was talking to Lou and she's like, oh, I get that sometimes. I'm like, Okay, then that must be something weird with like, like I have it now. I've been having it for like a while since we started this this kind of interview, but do you think it's your like do you think it's um your hearing auditory? Like cuz I don't know about you when you ever read, but I get ringing in my ears sometimes, but that's because you I can't remember who was telling me this. Someone, I can't remember, another reader or whichever, but it's because you're literally being top spoken to like an another like entity that isn't on this realm, like on this world, Leaply. And so you're you're you can't like you can't hear it because their their voice or whichever you want to explain it um, doesn't translate the same on the on this earthly plane so you get like ringing in your ears and sometimes that's even them conversation come like that's another conversation that they're trying to have with you and I'm curious especially if you're having it now like I wonder if there's like a little bit more of a, some auditory stuff happening for you right now it could be and I've also been trying to like work on my I'm trying to up my channel game <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to communicate more with so I've, I've, I've kind of like, I'm, I'm used to the master energy from the Kashuk records. I'm used to the guide energy and the book in itself. I said, yeah. okay, I want to take the next step and I want to go interdimensional, extra dimensional. So I've been trying to work with the Arcturians and I've had a, a really good experience during a meditation and I got to meet like the team that's going to be kind of like working with me. And that's he said, cool. you know, gradually we're going to start getting to know each other. It's going to be a very slow process. Um, but since then I've been, I've been or a little bit before, actually, I've been getting like, and the other day I was downstairs and, and my partner was there and my, my child was there and I, and I heard out of nowhere, I heard beep, like a really loud, really loud, like to me, like everybody in the world was hearing this beep. Yeah. And I go, wow, what is that? Is that the TV? And my partner's like, what? And I said, the TV, do you hear that? He's like, there's, you're crazy. There's no beep. I'm like, dude, it's like a really, really like, it's like a dog whistle beep. You know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> so loud it can be painful like I don't know about you um I'm also curious I've also heard this and I'm curious to know um did you all ever experience like earaches or anything like that when you were little not that I remember I don't think so no throat but not ear okay Mm -hmm. because my mentor interesting about the throat is my mentor who I had t- spoken to because she like I have like gut health issues as well as like I've always had chronic earaches when I was little um but that's because a lot of it had to do with like especially with the ringing and things like that I kept hearing things and I always kind of chalked it up to chronic ear aches um but yeah like that was like a part of your like my awakening when I was little is really because I was hearing other like spirits around me I just couldn't understand it because I didn't when I grew out of it and I think we all grow out of our intuitive when we're young um because we get reprogrammed by societal like experiences right and so I remember I didn't hear the same I had the same ringing as I, I was having like when I was a little kid which is so weird or sometimes like white noise too um, What's the white noise? It's like, it's like kind of like a TV. You know what I mean? My brother, my brother. That's actually, what happened to me. That's the. It's like a. It's like a whooshing, but like a. Sh- yeah. Ah, and it drove me crazy yeah. for days. I was like, "What is going on?" And it'd be like not the whole day, but yeah. it'd be like on and off the whole entire day. I was like, yeah, it's crap. so true, and it's so funny because my brother's super intuitive, and he probably will never hear this because whatever it's fine um but he because he's always like guided my intuitiveness and always believed in everything that I said around like ghosts and all that stuff like very encouraging and then I think I was over there for the holidays and he was hearing like this white noise and I was just like oh my gosh 
you're hearing what I heard and like all of these things and, and it was in our hub of like my parents place where it's, it's a very like spiritual like wild ghostly hub too and so it's just funny when you notice things around people who you know are very intuitive and you hear them or you know, hear them say certain things that you're like I don't know what you're you're experiencing right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. I don't oh know. If, did you have anything else, Lorena, besides that? I don't think so. Like, yes. Um, I think the last maybe two weeks, I've felt like very, and I don't know if that's also the eclipse coming up or what's come because there's a lot of weird astrological uh, energies coming up, but I feel like, yeah, like, what am I doing? Like I started meditating two nights ago again. So I'm back on track. Finally. I keep talking to her about this and she doesn't do it. And every time I start up again, I'm like, why wasn't I doing this? Um, But yeah, no, I've had this feeling for a few weeks now of like, I need to step up my game with myself because not so much for the channeling with the Akashic records, but I think if I, if I take care of myself a little bit more spiritually, like that's just going to enhance everything. And I have been having this feeling of like, there is some type of communication with other beings and other dimensions that I'm supposed to be having, but I'm just not ready for it because I'm not taking care of myself. Yeah. I'm on it. I'm reading every book I can find. Yeah. About- <laughs> I, felt that I haven't while. gone there personally yet. Oh my God, I'm obsessed but, with it right now. But I have other friends who are definitely, that is their jam. And like, I will definitely go and see you about that because there's probably <laughs> things that I need to work on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm but loving it. I'm, I'm finding out so much interesting stuff. And I'm like, wow, why did I not read about this sooner? I feel like I just every time I try and go into it I just I want I need someone to like very be very clear cut about it and I don't think I've met someone who's able to be clear cut for my my like brain to really take it in because it's so overwhelming I feel like yeah well we had we had um v You'd love V. She's, uh-huh. oh, she's amazing. Her episode we love will her. probably come out before yours. Okay. But you'll, you should definitely listen to that episode. I'll okay. make sure I send it to you when, when it comes okay. out because she's, I'm just getting goosebumps thinking about her. I'm just like, Whoa. <laughs> she's amazing. Like, that's all I can say. She's, she channeled a bunch of information. We were on the call for like an hour and a half just channeling. And the entire time, the way we were, you like, I think we, I haven't oh, re listened to it. I forgot about you, that. You, yeah. We, the three of us, but we just didn't say to each other, we we're just, we're, we're too busy trying to concentrate on the interview. The three of us were like really dizzy and out of it the whole interview. I was, like, I was literally staring. Myself. I was like, yeah. I was staring at the wall. I was like, what is So we don't know what it was. Right it was like the three energies together. Cause she had, she was in, at the time connecting to her interdimensional guide. Lorena yeah. and I both had Akashic records open. I could barely concentrate on like anything that was going on. And then I met, we messaged each other and then she's yeah. like, yep. <laughs> I felt the same so thing. Funny. It, it is amazing. wild when you meet people like that, that you just like, energetically it just is like this vortex and you are you're like I felt drained after an hour like (laughs) yeah but it's like that you just you know there was a lot of energy and there was a lot of channeling because it was channeling on our side and a lot of channeling on her side and I think she's just she's just very powerful I don't know but we're gonna get a reading from her actually this weekend I think because we were both like feeling called to do it I don't know we both feel like that call because she definitely channels through Zalo or Zalo I don't remember how to pronounce it okay her interdimensional like uh being that comes to her and like gives her information but I think you know there might be some of that stuff that we all have that we're not tapping into because we're just not ready we're not connected right I, I truly believe that I agree I totally agree and like there are certain things where I think not all of us are meant to do it I don't know about you but no totally yeah and yeah, I mean it, imagine if we were all here to do the same thing yeah that doesn't pretty, make sense no no yeah. definitely yeah and I but I also am 100% one of those people that believes like um 
I'm not into, and Lorena knows this about me, but I'm not like one of those people who believes that um, everybody's like an expert in something. Like they are the know-how and they can do this one thing and then nobody else can do it. Like Mm. I don't believe in that either. So I don't know, maybe I need to fight like No, No, we don't believe in that either. And and we always say like, some people might feel called to get a reading from us. Maybe some people might get, oh, you know, really? calling to get a reading from you. That doesn't mean that we know everything. It means they just energetically, they're vibing with us. They they have this calling to come to us because maybe we're the right person to channel it today. Oh. But who knows in a year, like that might change and we're all evolving and changing, hopefully. And constantly. we feel the same way when we teach people to read the Kashuk Records. Like if you need to go to another teacher in the future and like get a different perspective, yeah by all means go we're gonna teach you the way we felt that we wish we would have been taught and And we channeled it so yeah and the way we channeled it and yeah yeah. so I think that every teacher can give you something different and I think no one and I actually channeled a I did a YouTube video the other day and the masters put this information out um in the video is we shouldn't be like giving our power to this like one person like you're my leader right like we're supposed to find the power in ourselves so we're supposed to contact various teachers maybe various channels various readers get the information we need start learning maybe it's maybe it's a few readers maybe it's a few classes and maybe it's a few books and between all those things you bring them together and you create your way of doing your own things that aligns with you but that's really dangerous following one person i don't agree with that I told, I'm in the same boat. And it's interesting. There was definitely, I felt like for a while, there was this trend of that being there's only certain folks who you should only align with. And that did not feel good to me. And that will never feel good to me. And I love that we're all in this. And I think this is why, like, I connect with you all. And like, that's, why for sure I've been called to Lorena because like Lorena when yeah. we met it was like magic it was, it was I don't even know how we met <laughs> I don't know either I remember. but it was like magic and I just we really got into the nitty-gritty of it because I think we were both at that place of really in our at our place of like needing to expand and I think we were being really pushed out of our elements of what we usually did or mm-hmm. do. And so it was just interesting how we really at that place of wanting to get into really just wanting to be grounded into what we are doing and our integrity and what we are here to offer and how we want to work and what we how we want to offer things to folks. Um, and making sure that our values are, you know, are different and aren't the norm of what is the pattern of what was being brought to the healing community. Completely. Yeah. 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 We we really vibed off of that. And I think, and I think that's, I think that's also why we like connected so much when we were chatting, just even chatting without channeling. It was like, I feel the same way. Right. Like it was cool. Although I've never actually met you in person and you know, we're very far away, but you know, doesn't matter. But your energy's met. So yeah. you did meet. <laughs> totally. Yeah. And I feel yeah. like I've, I already know you. Like, I feel like if we met tomorrow in person, I'd be like, hey, what's up? <laughs> like, I already know you. you know? And that's kind of like how it goes. I think the closest, some of the closest people are people that are in the healing community that haven't even met yet in face to face. But, you know, our souls connect and they're, they're there. And that's what's so lovely about it. Yeah. And yeah I love it. Especially what we do, what we can do, right? Yeah. 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 What do you think about maybe just doing a mini, like a mini reading for people before we like sign off and giving your, maybe just give a message to people with your tarot and your, your intuitive gifts. Yeah, I can definitely do that. And see what comes up for you. I love that. I can't do that. I can't, I I do like a, like. (laughs) I am the, I don't know. I'm defiant of like all like typical rules. I love it. I'm like my like Aries side of me who's like, no, I'm not going to do it this way. I need to do it the other way. But I'm so, very much a resistant to like. No, no, I mean, I physically like, can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because I thought you meant like literally, like, I can't do it because that would hurt the cards. Or no, something. no, I physically can't get my hands to function okay, that way. Sorry. But okay, but I have had other readers who are like, don't treat your cards that way. And I'm just like, I can um, treat my cards, my my relationship with my cards. No, I think everybody 
like in my my belief, and I may be wrong because I'm start just starting with the, the tarot, but yeah. you create a system. You, you maybe you're taught one, you can adapt it, and your cards will know your system. You put that energy into your cards and say, cards, this is our system. Let's work together. Like, that's what I believe. I 100%. And I'm not one to, like, um, you know, some people cut the deck and then pull from the deck. I only do work with jumpers, so. Which I love. I love watching that. Which jump, oh, jump, the ones that come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you just see her. It's amazing. Cards that jump out because... I don't know, maybe because I like the show of it too. Like I'm kind like I'm in some way I like the theatrics of it. But you um, feel like they're coming out because energy is taking them out and that totally. makes sense. And it, it's yeah. so interesting before I keep pulling cards. It's like I I love it when I have sometimes a spread and I don't always work with spreads, um, but the card will jump up literally onto the row of what that question is. And I was like, okay, this is meant to be like, it, it's just wow. so interesting um, seeing them play like that. And like that, I think is just like gu- guides and spirit just being like, oh, hey, here's a little fun show for you. <laughs> or, like, here it is. or like doubling cards. I, Cause I use multiple decks. Like I use an Oracle card usually. And then I use tarot or like the right away deck or another type of tarot deck to like clarify it all um and so So do you're doing them all various more than one at the same time all the time yeah and then I love it because if especially if I'm using like a right away deck and then I use the Morgan Greer deck because Morgan Greer deck is based off the right away deck and it's um it will have the same imagery or the same, like, let's say the Knight of Rods, it will have another Knight of Rods. And it's just like, okay, that's an energy to just be mindful about, or this is what is really needing to be heard right now, or that just shows like the additional energy of it. Um, and same with like reading with uh, reversals, like there's a lot of controversies around people reading reversals, not reading reversals. Um, I typically don't always read with a lot of reversals. The only time I ever really do read with reversals is when the card literally shows up in reverse up, up right? and like, up, like kind of like up facing me. And then I will take it as that. Um, because again, my way of reading is based on intuition. And sometimes when cards show up, people automatically think that, oh, it's reversed. That means it's the opposite. And that's not necessarily true. That just could be that the energy is just like really strong and they want to show that to you. Or even sometimes when like people see the cards and they're like, okay, you know, um, normally this means like, they go by the traditional meaning of that card. Um, And if it's paired with something else, they'll still go by the traditional meaning, but really that card, like there's a totally different message with that card if it's paired with something else. And same with like the type of questions that you ask, like career stuff, like when people get thrown off with like cups energy, when talking about career, um, because when they think about career, they only think about the pentacles and that, you know, it's not necessarily true. And, or even like love readings, like all of the cards can mean differently depending on what you're being asked. Um, and what is being asked. So people kind of, yeah, try not to hold, if I was to like, if people want to learn any like t- like tricks about it, um, is to just, really don't hold on to the traditional meanings of it because that's just going to limit you in one way and it's not really going to expand your growth um in terms of your connection with tarot yeah, yeah. so much sense. i mean have you ever thought about teaching or do you teach already I have. um and i definitely i'm wanting to take on a couple of clients um individually to do teaching like individual lessons lessons um and I and I like to tailor things to what the person wants to learn so if they're already an experienced you know tarot reader that's cool like we can definitely work on expanding intuition and we can definitely look into what kind of um what kind of questions do they have a hard time like um reading for or any of that and they just need practice how to read like we can definitely work on that and then also anybody who's just new to it, like I'm open to that, but I'm definitely expanding what I'm offering because 
I'm definitely being called to do a lot more and to work with specifically with other healers and other intuitives and readers um, and working on like how to connect with certain clients or if they have any issues with clients or anything like that or a lot of the business side too like I'm being more and more asked so there's definitely changes happening so this is just a little plug in, but my Etsy will be very different soon and eventually will be off Etsy into a different um, platform to be used. So if you are liking what I have on my Etsy, you know, I would encourage you to like follow through with that. And then because things are going to be shifting soon, I awesome. believe. I think we're all shifting, right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Exciting. Okay. I'm just going to grab some messages for the reader. I mean, we can't make this stuff up. But we got spirit. <laughs> so, I mean, this says a lot of it. And I think this also just says like the connections for like, to be honest, there's a couple of things. And, and I want to clarify this a little bit more. But this is also just a validation of the connection that is happening here on this little podcast of an episode. Um, it's just recognizing how aligned we are um, and where we're really connecting spiritually. And also in terms of like, I keep getting like celebration for a lot of us. And I know this is supposed to be for the readers. I mean, the re why do we keep saying readers? The I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. Readers, listeners. Okay. So, but I keep getting like, it's a celebration for a lot of our, actually our guides happening because it's like, kind of like, I keep getting like, oh, finally, finally, this is happening. Like finally they, we, they, they've all connected. Um, so I definitely keep getting this for, for us in terms of like the audience. It's interesting. It's kind of like giving a validation around like you, you, are you getting like the validation of like spirit is here, like spirits right with you. It's like holding you. I keep getting the validation around that, but I want to clarify this a little bit more because I want to know a little bit more in depth of what maybe some listeners might need to hear right now. Oh, I love this. Okay. Yeah, you literally cannot make this stuff up. Okay, so we have the high priestess. So the high priestess is the major arcana, one of the major arcanas in the deck. Um, and it is the most intuitive like card that you can get. It is the most connected to spirit. And we have the six of cups, which to me signifies like past life relationships and connection and like that that innocence of what um, our soul connections have with one another is like that very much that beautiful essence of like calmness. And it's like, you know, no bounds are there and no judgment that is continued to happen. And there just seems to be like this call, which is interesting is like, this is again, a validation. I feel like there's been a lot of like, for maybe some of your listeners, it's like, if I can do it, can I do it? Um, is this really like what I'm supposed to do? Is this like, do I have this high priestess energy? Do I have that? What I would say is like, um, I don't believe in like the binary, but like feminine is a very spiritual energy. And I feel like this is where that feminine is because a I don't know about you, you all, but a lot of your listeners are coming from a place of really coming out of like the masculine, which is like in that earthly plane of like, this is how things need to be. This is what I'm being directed. And really what it is, is like that. Um, it's, it's like unsure. I keep getting like very unsure about holding this high priestess energy and just unsure. Are they even on the track? Are they even, channeling are they even doing the things that they think they're needing to do like have they even made it I keep getting for some of the listeners on this like channel and I keep getting like yes this is a validation of like yes you are 
this is what you're here being told. Um, and like, and I keep getting with the six of cups. It's kind of like, you need to play a little bit, like continue to play around and not hold on too tightly. Um, like the black and white thinking of what you need to do in terms of your spiritual practice. Again, there's no rules with spiritual practice. Like really you get to create your own set of rules and you get to create your own, I keep getting just play. Like it's, it's okay to play. Like go sit down with your guides for like a half an hour and just sit there in silence and take whatever comes in and ask questions and receive. Like I keep getting like play with like candle magic, like play with your plants. Like it's just important to play. And because spirit is just opening up that third eye for you all. That's what I keep getting. I love it. Yeah. What a beautiful a message. <laughs> the spirit card's like a glob. It looks like I a know. little monster. I love it. I know. I love it. It's called the Fuzzy Prism Oracle deck. And it's just like kind of like these different images of like um of entities and kind of almost alien-esque. Like this balance card looks kind of like an Oh, it looks like it's right up my alley. Yeah. <laughs> so those are types of like this is what's being shown. So it's really interesting. I know that sounds like sometimes I'm like, okay, you're, you're getting the most cheesiest messages, but sometimes. No, but that sounds right. And I feel like that is the case for a lot of the listeners. And I've felt that before of like, they're, they're waking up to this path. And that's, that was the goal when we started this podcast. It was, we want to help people understand that you don't have to like be living a specific way to be spiritual and that for some of us, it's easy for some of us, it's hard for me. It was hard. Yeah. You know, Sia, it was hard too in, in her own way, but she was able to channel more easily than me, but that doesn't mean that you can't be spiritual. It doesn't, you don't have to be an Akashic records reader or a tarot reader or an intuitive to no. be spiritual or to no. feel connected to yourself. Like, but also you can be spiritual and still learn from people. Like that's why we do interviews because we don't know it all. Like we want yeah. to learn with everybody and, and we want to teach, but be taught. Right. Yeah. So I think yeah. that if we all come together, we all have something to teach each other and we can be like our most spiritual selves, like our most aligned selves, you know? Definitely. Definitely. Okay. And like people don't know like anything that like if people don't know like rituals like little daily things that you can do are spiritual like running can be an active like spiritual like movement or like walking or you know tending to plants or you know lighting a candle to create a mood or like a sense of the mood or like you know like sense even just it, spirituality connection to spirituality can be as simple as that people often think that you know to create um, connection to like spirit or the universe it has to be so grand and really it doesn't like we we can be very simple and it can be really easy and it doesn't have to be this difficult experience and it shouldn't be because spirit is accessible to everyone right yeah we all have that power within ourselves to be intuitive and to That's listen cool. to our intuition and to connect but we have to decide that. That's the way I always see it. It's like we have exactly. to feel it, have that calling. Yeah. But also it's, I think, was it the high, high priestess? It's, yeah, high am priestess. I, yeah. Am I capable? Like, is this even part of my path? Like, it's connecting to that too. I t- that, that message was beautiful. Like, that feels true. Totally yeah. feels true. I definitely feel like there's one, for sure, there's like one listener who's like very resistant to it. And I'm just like, it's okay. Embrace it. Like, don't make it complicated. You do not need to make things complicated. Right. Yeah. And we talk about that sometimes. Like, don't like stress yourself. If you're stressed out about something, you're not going to connect. Like it's just, you're just getting into your head. You're getting into your ego. So that's not going to serve you. And you have to trust the process and the path. That's what's like impossible. You can't grab someone and say, okay, sit down. I'm going to teach you to be intuitive. I'm going to teach like no. everybody's process is a little bit different and they need to like figure it out how it works for them. And that's what something Lorena and I always talk about in our Akashic class. Like we're here to help you get you a tool, teach you how that tool works and help you like respect your own way of figuring out how to do it. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 You get to create your own practice. Right. 
Yeah. yeah. And do what feels right for you because what feels right for me or how I lived my path towards the Akashic records is very different from like several people I've talked to. And it's yeah. nice to see their process too. Like, you know, a lot of maybe listeners that were interested in the Akashic records and started to learn to read their own. And you're just like, wow, like this is what we wanted. We wanted the people to feel capable of just connecting. Yeah. And empowered, right? Empo- we yeah. It's empowered. Everyone to feel empowered. And I think that's super like one of the things that I'm definitely called to do is empower folks to, to create the life that they want to live and also to create the practice that they want to create and like all of those things. And so mm, people beautiful. shouldn't feel like, you know, people should feel confident in what their abilities are or what their they're here to offer, right? Um, and we all have a purpose and we all need to feel powerful in some way. And I think that's super important, especially right now when we're feeling so disempowered in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah. So true. Oh my gosh, thank you. I love for, how we talked about that. so many different subjects. I know. <laughs> <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> but I love that. I love it. Oh, I love okay. it. Okay, thank you so much for coming Thanks, to talk Danielle. to us. And we like took an hour and a half of your time. Oh, it's all good. I loved it. It felt like nothing. So I really, really enjoyed it. Thank you for Maybe having Maybe you can me. tell people where they can find you, like your social media channels. We'll put all that in the show notes. But if you could just tell people before we before we go. Yeah, so you can always reach me on my Instagram, which is Little Reader Tarot. Um, my email as well, so Little Reader Tarot at gmail.com. And then if you want to search for a reading, you can always go on to my Etsy page, which is Little Reader Tarot as well. Um, and if you have any questions or if there's like any readings that you know doesn't align with you, but you are wanting a reading that is more specific to like your case or needs, or you just have any questions, you can always reach me on my email or IG so yeah perfect oh my gosh thank you so much thank you we hope you guys enjoyed that episode and we want to thank danielle for coming on and talking about tarot and just kind of on our little spiritual rant that we had um which was a lot of fun we got into so many different topics And if you guys are interested in getting a reading from Danielle, make sure that you check the show notes. We'll have all all her links there. And be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We have our links on the show notes as well. And yeah, you guys, we'll see you next week. And we hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Bye.